In the seventh inning last night, Jordy Mercer broke out of an 0 for 25 slump. Neil Walker in a Hollywood type moment in the eighth inning drove in the game winning runs and the Pirates came back and beat Toronto for the second straight night. Will they do it again this afternoon and complete a three game sweep as this three game interleague series concludes at PNC Park. Hi again everyone with Bob Walk. I'm Tim Neverett. Robbie Insmikowski will be with us in a little bit. Well, Bob, lately the first six innings have been so-so. Innings seven through nine have been much better. Well, especially these last couple of nights against the Blue Jays. You know, they came in here, their bullpen a little beat up, and we've taken advantage of it. But it's something the Pirates have, uh, have done really most of the season. They much rather face the bullpens, the relievers, than they do the starters. You can look at the numbers there, reflect that. But e either way, one thing you're going to have to uh, look at as the season goes along, you've got to start playing with a lead. You've got to do better against the starting pitchers because you're not going to win consistently if you're always having to come back. Pirates, seven comeback wins tied for sixth in the National League. Big reason, Neil Walker hitting in the two spot. He likes hitting in front of Andrew McCutcheon. Well, Neil kind of had a down year with the bat last year. And this year, it, it certainly looks like he's setting himself up for a great season. And it's not just the batting average, the power numbers are up. He's hitting the ball out of the ballpark and also doing it from both sides of the plate. Left-handed, right-handed, it doesn't seem to make any difference. And Neil's going to have a fine season. So Neil Walker and the Bucks will look for three in a row over the Blue Jays this afternoon. Dustin McGowan going for Toronto. Edinson Volquez will be on the hill for the Pirates. It's time to dust off the brooms as the Bucks look for their first sweep of the 2014 season. Park. We await the finale of this three game interleague set. Bucks going for a three game sweep. Take a look at the Blue Jays lineup brought to you by Honda. Jose Reyes, switch hitting shortstop, leads off. Milky Cabrera in the three spot. Jose Bautista, career high 13 game hitting streak. He's also reached base in a Blue Jays record 30 straight games. Edwin Encarnacion cleans up. Juan Francisco. Brent Laurie at second base today. Colby Rasmus in center. Former Bucko Eric Kratz behind the plate. 
and Dustin McGowan doing the pitching batting ninth against right hander Edinson Volquez. Uh, Edison certainly has pitched well uh, for uh, his first month as a pirate. Uh, he's uh, really shown great command of his pitches uh, early on something that we didn't see you know, too much uh, in spring training or really it's been a problem a little bit in his uh, career but once the bell rang this year he made a couple changes to his um, mechanics and seemed to have paid off and really thrown a lot of strikes and a lot of good strikes defensively behind Edison Outfield Marte, McCutcheon, and Harrison. Harrison makes his second straight start in right field. Alvarez, Mercer back out there. Walker and Mike Davis at first base with Chris Stewart doing the catching. Josh batted leadoff and played right field last night. And at the beginning of the game, he was 0 for 3. At the end of the game, he was 2 for 2. So 2 out of 5. And a couple of big hits for Harrison Stewart behind the plate, getting the Sunday afternoon start. He's contributed with some base hits in his recent starts. So hopefully Chris will provide for the offense as well today as he catches Edinson Volquez. Edinson making his seventh appearance, his sixth start. Three career starts against the Blue Jays. He's 0-2. His first start against Toronto as a Pirate. Just about ready. Volquez facing Jose Reyes. First pitch misses for ball one. Sixty one degrees the game time temperature very pleasant afternoon on a kids day Sunday. And a strike one and one. Reyes off to a slow start average wise at one eighty six. That's a good seat for that young man, huh? And the 1 1. In the right field, Harrison. Right there in front of the track. One down. Good way to start. Kick Reyes off the bases. It's a lazy fly ball. The J. Hey. Well, one thing for Volquez, and it's the same for any pitcher, though, Bob, but I think in recent years, it applies to Edinson because coming into this season he had had a lot of first inning troubles had a very high first inning ERA. But if he gets out of the first inning without giving up a run. What we've seen of him he usually does pretty well the rest of the way. And strike to Cabrera. Okay Cabrera at 326. Five homers for Toronto. Bouncer to Ike Davis. Two down. They just back out there today. Came in late last night and had a key infield single. In the eighth inning. Ended up scoring one of the two runs driven in by Neil Walker. Had the shift on. They were playing without a third baseman and he had a little ball that just came off the end of his bat rolled down toward uh, the third base area and there was nobody to make a play. The shift didn't work for the Blue Jays. That was a, a big hit at the ball rolling. Two down base is empty for Bautista. Shifting for him with three men on the left side of the infield. Walker playing up the middle, but toward the shortstop side. So Jordan Mercer in the middle. Alvarez guarding the line. Two and zero. Oh. The one thing you can't do with a, a shift on a right-hander, though, you can't put the first baseman over to to play second base. That's where the umpire is normally if you the, the shift. Would have somebody there. 2 0, little number. Edinson throws him up, and it's a clean first inning. 1 2 3. Edinson Volquez retires the Blue Jays on eight pitches. Pirates coming to bat next.
Josh Harrison set to lead off for the Pirates for the second straight ball game. No scores. The Pirates back for the first time this afternoon. And this is the Toyota Pirates starting lineup. After Harrison, it will be Neil Walker. Of the last four games, seven out of 12, three doubles, three runs batted in, and he's reached base safely with five walks. McCutcheon third, Alvarez fourth, Starling Marte bats fifth for the first time today. Ike Davis, Jordy Mercer, Chris Stewart hitting eighth, and then Edinson Volquez batting ninth against right-hander Dustin McGowan. You see McGowan's numbers on the season. Uh, he really needs to uh, start showing a little more endurance, or uh, he'll be probably sit back to that that bullpen. His uh, first start of the season was exactly a month ago. That was his first start since September 2011. So he is trying to, to prove that he has the endurance to to be a starting pitcher. And he's had some stamina issues, and a lot of it stems from the fact he is diabetic. And today he is wearing an insulin pump for just the second time as a pitcher. And Harrison lines this one down the left field side, and it is foul. He's had success as a as a bullpen guy and their bullpen is in disarray and not doing well at all this year. And that's another reason that they might be inclined to. Uh, if they could find somebody to. To, to pitch for him. To start for him to put him in the bullpen. You see where the uh, insulin pump is right there in his back. Hold on by the belt and Harrison hits this one well. Rasmus going back and he will not get it. Out of the glove, it looked like and Harrison around second, heading for third. Josh Harrison leads the game off for the Pirates in a big way. Beautiful when you get a guy to third with nobody out to start the game. Rasmus almost made a heck of a catch. I think this ball hit his glove just before he ran into the wall. The end of the webbing. Jay Hay taking that look to see what's going on out there and made the call himself to get into third. So a triple for Josh Harrison, the tenth of his career, first of the season. An RBI chance right away for Neil Walker. A great opportunity. His first inning of the game, the infield's going to be back. They're going to. Uh, Allow you to score that run uh, to trade it out. And Harrison's last triple came last August at San Diego. So right now you're thinking just get a ball put in play, ground ball, fly ball, whatever. And Walker pulls it foul, hooked it down the line. Well, another thing that might be facing McGowan heading back to the bullpen is the call up today. Of the Blue Jays' number two pitching prospect, Marcus Stroman. He will start in the bullpen, but they figure Stroman's going to end up in the rotation at some point sooner than later. They sent a position player, Anthony Ghost, down to make room for Stroman. To the right side, and this will get a run in. 1 0 Pirates. Neil Walker with a ground ball out, drives in his 16th run of the year, and the Bucks strike first. Now you would love to get a base hit every time, but. That's what you'll take. Yeah, that's situational hitting. Make sure you get something hit out there. Anything but back to the pitcher is going to score yourself a run. Make sure he hooked it. Definitely got it away from the, the pitcher. It puts the Pirates up by a run. Score first. Most time you're going to win. It doesn't hurt. McCutcheon takes low. For the Blue Jays, the perspective they have when their opponent scores first, their record this year is three and twelve. So that would be a positive trend for the Pirates today. I don't really understand why that is, but you look most teams, uh, maybe even all teams, that they score first. And they, it gives them a great advantage of whether they're going to win the game or not. McCutcheon's hit safely in four straight. Had a hit last night. 
in a game without a clock, it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense, right? You sure. think, you know, hockey, football makes a big difference. Basketball makes no difference. Well, yeah. <laughs> Two one. That's inside. Did he check his swing? No. Bill Miller, the crew chief, rings up a strike on appeal. And now the count is two and two. Allegheny Health Network Super Mo slowing it down for us. And you can see that he did come across the front edge of home plate. Three two count now. Kutch has done very well against American League teams. 375, seven doubles, two home runs. In 18 games against the American League last season, 48 career RBIs against AL teams. And he is on board. Base on balls for McCutcheon. Doesn't see a lot of strikes. Well, this year, more than last, he's seeing fewer and fewer pitches to hit. I think he's evolving a little bit as a, a, a hitter also. He's kind of learning to, to be patient. He's not you know, letting the... Uh, Situation get to him, get over anxious, start trying to expand the strike zone. He's okay if you're not gonna not gonna throw me anything to hit, and I'll let Pedro take some swings with a man on. First pitch to Alvarez coming after the throw to first. Pedro's hit safely in 16 of his last 17 interleague games. Five game hitting streak going. All one. Loves the daytime. He does. Remember, Pedro homered in game one in the ninth inning. That ended up tying the game at five to five and setting up the two out dramatics for Starling Martez for his career walk off. Pedro with seven homers. Ball and one strike. For Dustin McGowan today, it's his sixth start since the 26th of September 2011, and just his tenth start since the 2008 season. He did face the Pirates as a starter in 2008. So just the second career start against the Buccos for Dustin McGowan. Time out. Start against Kansas City. Allowed three hits over six innings pitched. In between innings, he will monitor his insulin pump to be able to maintain his stamina throughout the game. Two and one. Yeah, the reason we do we talk about the uh, his endurance out there. His starts have gone you know, two plus innings, six innings, four innings, four innings, six innings. Two one pitch to Pedro. Up in the air to left. Malky Cabrera. He'll make the catch. Uh, two out. And Pedro for one. Good pitch to hit. Pedro you can tell by his reaction. Uh, not happy with himself. Got that ball up out over the plate. Starling Marte hit seventh, sixth, and now fifth this week. It's like he's climbing a ladder. Clint Hurdle today in his press conference was asked uh, where he prefers Marte in the order, and Clint said, well, I've got a spot, I really like him, but he wouldn't share it. And the uh, reporter said, Well, where would that be? And he said, I'm, I'm not going to tell you right now, but I have a spot where I'd like him to hit. And maybe it's this spot. We don't know. But in the sixth and seven holes, he seemed to do okay. 
Got off to Schneid. He was really struggling as a leadoff man. Clint told Starling last week you need to fight in the batter's box and compete. And that he wasn't getting it done as the leadoff man. So he took him out of the first spot in the order. And since then, over the last four games, he's hit 471, 8 for 17. See, you know, that, but I. I think there's, it's overrated about where he's hitting. I can find you four games in a row where he's hit leadoff where he put numbers up like that also. You know what I, I mean? Bet you're right. Yeah. So it's 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 all about is he hitting the ball well or not? Doesn't matter if he's hitting seventh, fifth, third, ninth, first, fifteenth. McCutcheon takes off and a broken bat comebacker. Underhand toss by McGowan. Marte is out. But Josh Harrison's triple sets the table. Neil Walker got him in. And after an inning, it's a one nothing pirate lead. A busy day in the bird today. Early this morning, the Pittsburgh Marathon took off, and the half marathoners as well. Of course, you got the Pirates going on now, and the Penguins tonight. Congratulations to all the finishers. Brian Morris's wife Chelsea ran the half today, and she can really run. 134.24 is Brian Morris's wife Chelsea's time today. Our director Pete Toma, his wife Susie, did it in 210.28. One of our technical directors at Root, Matt Walmsley, ran it in 152.41. And one of our associate producers, Mikey Walsh, 208.06 and a half today. Well, congrats to all the participants who started and finished. Edwin Encarnacion, his first at bat. In the top of the second, Pirates a 1 0 lead. What a nice day for all the activities. The, the race, the ball game, and then game two of round two tonight between the Rangers and Penguins. Of course, that's inside, but it's a great day here in the Berg today. 2 0. Foul off, two balls and a strike. Edison Volquez last time out. Had a tough outing against the Cardinals, gave up six runs on seven hits. And that's been the only blemish really for him this season. His other outings have been very solid and not really reflective of his one and two record. His ERA 321. Kind of painted this fastball. Didn't get a call. Pitch and didn't get that one either. Yeah, that one just a smidgen lower. So a walk and the leadoff man is aboard for Toronto. Pirates host the National Sunday, May 25th for youth baseball and softball day at PNC Park. The first 1,000 players and coaches to register as a team get to participate in the special pregame ceremony on the field. For tickets, go to pirates.com/slash youth baseball and softball. 
mask or sunglasses on a day like today. Bring a hat. I was always told bring a hat to the ballpark. Really? Usually they're giving one away. <laughs> I probably figured he was going to get one here. That's why he didn't wear one. A nice uh, looking hats they gave away uh, yesterday, last night. And the fedoras. Still seeing some people wearing them today. Juan Francisco starting at third base. He started Friday at that position. Did not play last night. Infield shifted for him. He's got the left side wide open. And pitch inside, and Stewart needs a word with Edinson Volquez, who has walked in Carnacion and then starts Francisco off 2 0. Oh. You can see in that shift right there, because it's a left hander up and not a right hander, you can move everybody over. You got three guys on the right, and then the, the one person you leave on the other side takes away the middle of the field. Something you can't do when you have a right hander. We were talking about that earlier. Because you can play without a third baseman, you can't play without a first baseman. <laughs> Got to be somebody to throw the ball to. And that's uh, the, the major difference in the two shifts. So we're always inside, 3 and 0. Oh. And after Volquez got a 1 0 lead. The top of this inning not going anything like he had planned at all. And this is uh, the thing that he's been so good at all years throwing strikes. And now he's at the leadoff walk 3 0 on the next guy. That's a little bit of a red flag. That's the some of the problems that he's had throughout his career has been with the control. And he walked Francisco on four pitches. He'll probably get a visit here. Back to back walks. That. 17 pitches so far, 11 balls. Yeah, here comes right. Fired yeah. pitching coach will take the stroll out. He's not missing by a huge amount. He, we saw a couple of pitches to uh, Incarnacion that were very close. He just didn't get the call on him. So it's not a big deal. It's not like he's, you know, bouncing fastballs, missing way high, way outside. He's just a little off right now. Which for me is you don't have to you're not like you, you have to make this big change now in your mechanics. There's nothing that going on. Maybe just try and, and not be quite as fine. Maybe for right now you got to try and, and take a, a bigger bite of that strike zone. If you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And the last Sunday before the game in St. Louis you pointed out some things that Edinson is doing better this year you know mechanically. Well he's really being able to. To, to keep his body and his weight back over that back leg just a little bit longer, which keeps that front side closed up. So when that his front foot hits, he's not already flying way open with his front shoulder. Nice slider. I'm sorry. Right there. Beautiful. Yeah, Brett Laurie, the hitter. Laurie, the second baseman. And he's been turning in a lot of multi hit games lately. Leading their team in RBIs with 21. One ball and one strike. Two on, nobody out. Pirates leading one to nothing. What do you make of that uh, sun glare black? He's got under his eyes. Got plenty of it there. I think that keeps the glare off his cheeks, or off, his, like a, off his ears. It's like an NFL linebacker. <laughs> There's a high chopper and Mercer bottom it safe at first. Couldn't Mercer. get the ball out of the glove. Yeah, couldn't get it out. And now trouble is brewing big time here in the second inning for Volquez. And it, it's really nothing that the Blue Jays are doing right now. You got a couple of walks, and now this ball's just bounced right off home plate. Still had a chance to get the out at first, but couldn't get the ball out of the glove. So Laurie down at first base over at third. The defense is a, a little bit of an issue of, of late for the Pirates. Juan Francisco at second base. And there is Laurie. Well, we have three or four errors in last night's game. Four. Four errors. 
able to overcome them. And the ball to start Colby Rasmus. Volk is pitching from behind this entire inning. Base is loaded, nobody out. Tying run 90 feet away. Go ahead, run at second. Strike now to Colby Rasmus, the former Cardinal. Rasmus last night had an RBI base hit, ended up going one for five. Three grand slams in his career. Well, Volk has won one. Borderline pitch didn't get another call. Greg Gibson behind the plate. No, it's not like these, these pitches are definite strikes. They're just, you know, pitches that uh, you like to make and you like to think you're going to get about half of them called strikes. It's just off the plate. Edison Volquez struggling here. That, well, that one was a, another one of those right on the edge. In yeah. fact, that one I think. Uh, was a strike. Once you hit the edge of the strike zone, that's good enough. It lights it up. So now Volquez with a 3 1 count on Rasmus. Pitch away from walking in a run. He's a pitch away from getting a strikeout, perhaps. If he get a strikeout here, you've got Eric Kratz, a double play candidate, coming up next. Three and two, bases jammed. Still nobody out for the Blue Jays in the second. And the payoff is drilled to right field. And for Colby Rasmus, his fourth career grand slam. And the Blue Jays take a four to one lead. Now just go back the way this inning was built. Base on balls, base on balls. A chopper off the plate that, that could have been out, but Mercer couldn't quite get the ball out of his glove quick enough. So you got the bases loaded. And they. Uh, it took advantage, and that's usually the story in, in ball games anywhere that you watch. What team takes advantage of mistakes by the other team? So far, the Blue Jays have uh, taken that first big step at the big hit. Three two breaking ball looked like that. You're thinking that the the hitter with the bases loaded is looking fastball in a 3-2. He knows you can't risk a ball four. So a breaking ball should be a fairly safe pitch if you can throw it for a strike. But for whatever reason, not that time. 0-2 to Kratz pops it up. Mike Davis calling for it. Make the catch. And that's the first out. So Volquez able to retire Kratz, and now he'll face the pitcher Dustin McGowan. Well, McGowan standing in for the first time. Takes a strike. A career. 200 hitter, two hits and 10 at bats. Volker is looking to make quick work of him right now. One ball and two strikes. 
Well, and you give up one of those. How do you recover? I mean, you just get the ball back and go and not think about it, or yeah, you can't turn the clock back in time. There's nothing to do. But I mean, it, 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 it's really uh, you know, too late yet. You can't go back and kicking yourself about the walks, but I mean, it, it, that's all negative things. You need to turn the page and uh, you try and stay out of big innings early. But if they do happen, you just have to look at it as like, okay, I messed up. I got to be perfect the rest of the time I'm out here. It's got to be zeros from now on. And, you know, hopefully my guys can uh, can do something. There's still plenty of time left in the game. A lot of baseball left. Just a three-run lead for the Blue Jays. They had a five-run lead last night the Pirates overcame. Jose Reyes fly to right field. But on paper, and this is always on paper, well, they don't have very strong bullpen, and their starter doesn't have a history of going very deep. So you would think that our offense should do pretty good this afternoon. So, you know, you, if you want to think of ways to stay optimistic, there's one right there. Just, hey, okay. You know, we're in a three run hole. Still. Got almost the entire game left to play. No reason to hit the panic button yet. Three and one out of Reyes. Reyes, a switch hitter, batting left handed against the right hander Volquez. Three one pitch. And a bouncer to Jordy Mercer. Grand slam by Colby Rasmus, the fourth of his career, has given the Jays a four to one lead. Fall on Root Sports is brought to you by Toyota. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com for special offers. And by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Let's go, Bucks. Between innings, Ray Surridge and Edison Volquez having a visit. Edison, a, a tough start to that inning. And ended. With three in a row being retired after the grand slam by Rasmus. Now a three run Toronto lead, just the bottom of the second inning. And Ike Davis with a 1 0 pitch. One and one. And Davis had a key infield single last night in the eighth. Ended up scoring what would be the game winning run. 
behind in the count of ball and two strikes. Is that your credit card she's got, Bob? No, uh, I've not allowed it. I have credit cards. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's the keeper of the credit not card. <laughs> two balls, two strikes to Davis. We have a keeper of the credit card at our house, but it's not me. It's not you? Gowan ready to go. The 2 2 to Davis. Ground ball is second. There's Laurie. Throws him out. And there's one gone for the Pirates in the second inning. They had a motive this day in Pirates history. Pirates score 11 runs in the sixth inning, tying a franchise record in a 12 to 5 win over the Reds at Three Rivers Stadium. 11 runs. Obviously, a, uh, a record most runs in an inning in the modern era. We're trailing 5 to 1 in the sixth. That's a lot of runs in one inning. Nine hits, four walks, two wild pitches. It took four Reds pitchers to get out of the inning. 5 to 1 in the sixth. The trailer. Somebody got off the hook there, huh? That would be Bob. Was it Bob Block or John Smiley? Smiley? Yeah, why would you think it was me? Well, because I thought that's what you, you were doing. You were setting up the no, table. No, no, I, I didn't know who it was. It was John Smiley. This one to right field. And Batista make the catch in fair territory. Told actually it was Zane Smith. I can't remember. Couldn't tell you. But I'll take your word for it. Two down, and here's Stewart. Chris Stewart sent to face Dustin McGowan. Strike one to Stewart. Four hits and 20 at bats. It's through five games so far for Stewart. Slaps this one out of play, and he's behind 0 2. Stewart's hit safely in three of his first five games. Started the second game of the doubleheader in Baltimore Thursday. One ball, two strikes. Here's the one two pitch. Down and away, two balls and two strikes. McGowan, a large arsenal of pitches that he'll use. Fastball, two seamers, got a good changeup, curveball. And Stewart swings and strikes out. One, two, three. Go the Pirates in the second. On to the third, 4 1 Toronto.
the first base coach for the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm Robbie Insmikowski. Tim Leeper has a nice connection to the Pittsburgh Pirates. From 2006 to 2008, he was the manager of their double-A team in Altoona. And two of his prized pupils were Andrew McCutcheon and Neil Walker. And Leeper told me earlier today that the biggest thing that sticks out in his mind was how Andrew McCutcheon handled a rough start to the season. The only real extended slump Kutch ever had in the minors was in double-A when Leeper had him. He said Kutch never panicked. Maybe inside he did a little bit, but he would never show it on the outside. He could not have had a worse start to the season, but really there was never any doubt to his game, and he never gave in and kept plugging away. He had this inner confidence, Leeper said, that he would turn it around, and he played hard every day. If he slumped at the plate, he never took it into the field, and his defense was always stellar. Tim? Now, Melky Cabrera lines one of the left center field for a leadoff base hit for Toronto. And Cabrera aboard. He's now one for two. Now Cabrera, what are they? Real quality hitters around. There's always a tough out. Well, Reaper with some familiarity with some of these pirates. And of course, in the minor leagues, you get to know you guys pretty well. There's Jose Bautista. Nobody out, man aboard. Third hit for the Blue Jays off the bat of Cabrera. Bautista bounced out to Volquez in the first. Bautista with a home run in last night's game. Hit it in the sixth inning, his ninth of the year. Takes a strike. One ball and one strike. Solid hitters that you have to worry about up and down this uh, Blue Jay lineup. Not that easy. A lot of RBIs. Especially the guy in the box right now. And Bautista pulls that one foul. Cost him a bat, too. The Barrel Automotive League leaders stat teams with the most pickoffs by pitchers in the National League. Philadelphia six, the Pirates with five. Braves, Reds, and Giants all with three. Brian Morris has two of them. Two of those five for the Pirates. And the second one last night. Melky Cabrera with Jose Bautista at the plate. Out as Cabrera advances to second base. Three unassisted. The put out. And the Blue Jays with one out of man in scoring position. It's kind of an odd swing, I thought, on that. Like he was just trying to protect the plate, not strike out. Edwin Encarnacion walked and scored in the second inning. Hitting 243 for Toronto. And ball one. Over his last 30 games of interleague play, and Carnacion hitting 331. He's just one for eight in this series, however. This one to McCutcheon, who had him played near left center field. He'll make the catch. And Cabrera put the brakes on. And head back to the bag. Two men are out. Cabrera going back and tag up. Really, there's, unless you're going to go, which isn't real smart because there's uh, already two outs. Why are you going back and tagging up? In the rare occasion that he would fumble that ball out there and drop it, you'd feel awfully silly now running to third base because you're tagging up instead of going halfway and then scoring on a messed up ball. Well, 
Juan Francisco walked on four pitches in the second inning. He'll take a strike this time. Well, we saw that here in this ballpark a couple of years ago. Somebody was tagging up with a similar fly ball to left, and the ball got dropped. And uh, I can't remember who the base runner was. It was somebody on the other team. Instead of the embarrassment of having to stop at third, he took the embarrassment of being thrown out at the plate. <laughs> Whereas if he would have been halfway, like they teach you, he would have scored easily. Cabrera gets his lead from second base, two down. 1 1 pitch to Francisco. One and two. Toronto heads to Philadelphia. They'll have a four game series with the Phillies after this. They'll stay in interleague play. Meantime, tomorrow, the Pirates get back to National League play and will welcome the San Francisco Giants here. Down on strikes goes Francisco. No runs a hit and a man left through two and a half at PNC Park. Blue Jays four, Pirates one. Terrific. Thanks, Dan. You did well, didn't you, Bob? Uh, marathon doesn't mean much to me. It's some place in Greece. We had a marathon Thursday in Baltimore. <laughs> yeah, then that was a marathon. That was a marathon. Here's Edison Volquez uh, leading off for the Pirates in the third inning. It's a marathon for anybody listening to those games on the radio and having to listen to me cough all night. Well, we're glad you're feeling better, Bob. I know that. You came out last night. You didn't have to, but you played hurt. Well, you sound better today. I was in bad shape for a couple of days, but got over it. Dustin McGowan winds and pitch to Volquez just outside. One and two. And one two on the way. Is even two balls and two strikes to Volkis. Edinson one for eight on the year. And the 
2 2 delivery. Fouled off of Eric Kratz. Kratz made his big league debut as a pirate. After many, many years in the minors, a point where he thought he even might give it up at some point because he'd never make it, but finally did and had some solid time with the Philadelphia Phillies. And Volquez down on strikes. Second strikeout for McGowan. Fans follow every Pirates game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look at instant replay, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day and more. Download on the App Store or visit Pirates.com today. Hello. They're waving to you, Bob. It's Josh Harrison one for one with a triple. Josh really looked like uh, he was seeing the ball well that first at bat. He ripped that long foul ball that almost had uh, looked for a moment like it might be a home run. And then he went the opposite gap for the triple. Well, Josh can continue to get on base and make things happen. Do you think he has more of an opportunity to play in a spot that we're seeing him like today and last night, right field and leading off? Well, the way the team's offense went that first month of the season, it was very spotty and consistent. Uh, there's you know, several places that if you hit, you play. And I think right field on our team is one of them. That you know, nobody that's gone out there has really, you know, hit consistently. They've had certain games, nights where they've done very well, but not on a consistent basis. And that time Harrison chased one upstairs and struck out. The high one. I think a lot of what happens with utility players, if they uh, they look like they're they're hot with the bat, then you you, you want to try and get them out there as often as possible. There's top of one of the right fielders looking on, and and I think that you know managers Clint in this case, you know, he sees okay, I got one, my bench guy, my utility super utility guy, play anywhere. He's swinging a good bat right now, so why not get him some starts? You know where. Wherever you think you might need that, you can use that hot bat, and so it's right field in this case. Strike one to Walker, one ball, one strike to Neal. The, the Pirates, uh, you know, back the last couple of years I played, they would do that a lot with Lloyd McClendon and, and Dave Clark. And, you know, those two guys, uh, they could get real hot with the bat. Uh, the word, you know, not only just base hits, but you're talking home runs. They would, they could uh, go into the middle part of the lineup for a couple of days when they were hot. And so even though they weren't everyday players, they, they would play every day for a while. They would get their bats uh, up. You, know, you want to keep them sharp. You got to get them a bat somewhere. So you got to, you want to do it when they're how hot. When they're swinging well, that's when you want to put them in there. And that's what Jay Hayes been doing lately. One two pitch to Walker. Bounced. Keep in the scorebook. See where Andrew McCutcheon is on deck Just by looking at the scorebook. Or by looking at your television. A slow ground ball hit to Jose Reyes. One, two, three, bottom of the third inning for the Pirates to three complete. Four, one, Blue Jays.
Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by the Chevy Cruze and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive, we're going to make your day. Let's go Bucks! Well, the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mark Tomlin, sitting behind the plate here today, taking this one in. Good Four baseball fan. Came yeah. down to spring training for a while. Yeah, down a couple of times. Brett Laurie pops up the first pitch to shallow left. Mercer out. And here comes Marte. And at the last second, Marte able to make the catch. Well, that uh, looked a little dangerous for, well, right through the entire play it did. Now right now you see Marte he is coming but Mercer's not giving ground either Marte's not saying anything or Mercer doesn't hear him you can see Marte's lips moving for whatever reason Mercer didn't hear him until right the very last moment backed off just in the nick of time Colby Rasmus shows bunt then the shift along the only guy on the left side is uh, Mercer. Rasmus responsible for all four runs with a grand slam in the second inning. So he might try to take a base hit. Or he'll do that. And this one is going to be off the wall. And Harrison will collect it and get it back onto the infield and into second base with a double. Is Colby Rasmus his seventh double of the season? Well, he's certainly been the big bat this afternoon for the Blue Jays. Well, this time a fastball. The home run was on a breaking pitch, 3 2 breaking pitch, with the bases loaded, as a matter of fact. And this time, uh, hunting fastball and almost got this out of here. Just a couple feet short. Right at the 375 mark. Gave that one a pretty good ride. A little more of a line drive than his home run was. One out. Eric Kratz the batter. You're the, you're, well, you got a one out on the board, and you have eight nine coming up. So you still feel fairly confident you can get out of this. All one to Kratz. Popped up to Ike Davis at first base. His first time up. Look in by Volquez now. Ball two delivered to Kratz. 2010 Kratz made his big league debut with the Pirates, played in nine games. Last year, a career high 68 games with Philadelphia. For three seasons with the Phillies. And now Volquez you falling behind 3 0. You don't want to lose Kratz because then you get McGowan up there in a position to where he can sacrifice bunt. You have to go after the number eight hitter uh, in this case. These are the two guys you have to get in the box and on the index circle. Kratz and then a successful sack bunt. Now you have the top of the lineup coming up. Jose Reyes with two runners in scoring position. And you're already down by three. You got to go after Kratz. Popped him up back and out of play and kind of full of three and two. You know, I don't want to imply that Kratz is, is an easy out, but you got to play the Percentages. You got to think what well, what would be better to go after Kratz with good strikes, or to have with run runner in scoring position, or face Jose Reyes with two runners in scoring position. It's, just, it's almost like you're doing math out there most of the time. Give me a headache with all the math. That's why Rock was such a good pitcher when he got his opportunities. This one deep to right center. Jay Hay going back. This ball is caught up against the wall. 
tagging from second and going to third safely is Colby Rasmus. A long out. Uh, Harrison able to catch up to it to retire Eric Kraft. Way better than a walk though. You you go after him and he, he even hit this one well. He got the head of the bat to it, drove it out there, but it stayed in the ballpark. He got your out. Now you have the the pitcher up there, McGowan. There's two outs. You had to take your shot with Kratz, even if it meant just here. You know, I'm going to give you a good strike to hit. I just hope you make it out with it. All right, one step from the padding. Good thing those walls are padded nowadays. Some of them are. They used to know. I think all of them are except one. Except one in Chicago. It's all brick. That one's a grandfathered in. Two strikes to McGowan. Well, none of them were you know, not all that many years ago. You have to be very careful slamming into a fence. Let's get some chain link in front of the scoreboard. I think uh, Andy Van Slyke. Dislocated a shoulder, or broke a collarbone, something like that, running into the walls in St. Louis. And McGowan down on strikes, so Rasmus stranded at third. Great catch by Jay Hay. Middle of the fourth inning. Stay at the ballpark next Sunday as the Bucks host the St. Louis Cardinals at 8:05. All moms in attendance take home a reusable tote bag, courtesy of MLB Network. Treat your mom this Mother's Day. For tickets visit Pirates.com. An 8:05 p.m. start on Sunday, May 11th. Adam McCutcheon will lead off. Pirates trying to get back on the scoreboard. They had a one-nothing lead. And then the grand slam by Rasmus in the second has made it four nothing. They'll be celebrating a week from today, Mother's Day, certainly. And here is Kutch. Walked his first time up. Takes ball one from McGowan. 307. Cuts and hopes he can keep that average over 300 the rest of the way. It's a long way to go, though. One ball and one strike. One and one to count. Two balls and strike. Just one walk behind Joey Votto now. We talked about him not getting a lot of 
pitches to hit, but the guys were getting walked. Two of them are Reds. Votto and Bruce, Troy Tulowitzki of the Rockies, Anthony Rizzo of the Cubs. Ground ball to second, Brett Lorry. Goes on to first to retire Andrew. One gone. Pedro coming to the plate now. Alvarez 0 for 1. He flied to left field in the first. Looked like it was a, a pitch that Pedro thought he should have done more with. He saw he, kind of the look on his face after he popped it up. Ball one to Pedro. Pedro had throughout his history as a pirate. He's kind of clustered his home runs together at times. And hitting that home run uh, in game one. There oh, goes one. On a stretch. Now this one's going to go off the wall. Alvarez around first. He'll have to stop. One of the longest singles you'll ever see. And hardest hit. Well, Pedro launched one right off the Clemente wall and couldn't get more than a single base as Bautista got that ball in quickly. Yeah, one of the things about PMC Park is that right field Clemente wall that a, a right fielder if he positions himself well and gets a good rebound can turn those what should be doubles uh, most of the time especially in other ballparks can turn them into a single. Batista did a nice job. Pedro a hit now a six game hitting streak for Alvarez. Ah, Arte Bighead. Starling pops it up. Lori and foul ground will make the grab. Two down. So Davis now coming up to face. McGowan with two outs. Pirates offense has slowed up since the first inning. Harrison led off with a triple. And then last inning, one, two, three. The third inning, one, two, three. McGowan had retired nine in a row before Alvarez base hit. Davis takes a ball. Kept it playable. Pedro stays where he is. Davis went one for two off the bench last night. He's hit safely in two of his last three games. Now he batted second in the order during both games of the doubleheader Thursday. It's the first time in his career he's ever hit in the two hole. This one is straight back in the way out of play. Two and one to Davis. And home games this year. Combined with City Field in New York as a Met and PNC Park. Hitting 303. Two and two. Pirates are six and five all time against Toronto, four and one against them here at PNC Park. Side to Davis and the count full three and two. Alvarez will get a chance to get a head start with this pitch. A nice little advantage to have when you 
two outs, three two, you get the run. So if there is a ball that's hit out there that's borderline in other circumstances where you, you might be able to score the runner or not. Davis fouls it back. Now the uh, the borderline chance becomes uh, an easy score because uh, Pedro in this case gets that nice running start. Two down, full count. McGowan's payoff pitch. Up high, ball four. The Bucks with two on. Two out walk issued by McGowan. Jordy Mercer will be the hitter now with Alvarez at second and Davis at first. Fly to right field in the second inning, 0 for 1. Last night, the big pinch hit double in the seventh. Broken 0 for 25 skid. He was really slumping until he got a hold of that ball last night. And Jordy representing the tying run. Jordy looking for that, that good stroke that he had last year. Came up and uh, basically with that bat of his took over the starting job. That hitter's in there somewhere. Just need to find him. Uh, Clint told me today in the pregame radio show that. When you're in a slump like that, it feels like there's 15 guys on defense. Every time you hit one, it goes at somebody. Two strikes now to Jordy. And Barmas got the start last night at shortstop. Jordy back in there today. Two on, two out, one ball, two strikes. Jordy trying to continue to work McGowan like Davis did. Followed a number of pitches off and then ended up working himself a base on balls. For Stewart on deck. Stretch on the one two. Strike three call. So the inning comes to an end. The Pirates leave two, get one hit. On to the fifth, 4 1 Toronto.
play. Rick Sofield, first base coach, was tossed from the game. Clint Hurdle also tossed from the game, arguing with home plate umpire Greg Gibson. And you see Sofield mentioning something to Gibson, and then he gets tossed, and Sofield comes over and finishes the words that he wanted to say to Gibson. So Gibson has thrown out the first base coach and the manager. Pirates not happy with that last strike that was called to Jordy Mercer. As Soulfield, uh, as he was walking in, I'm sure, you know, made a comment that he didn't think was something that would get him thrown out. But then once he was tossed, then he uh, definitely got his uh, two cents in. And, and then uh, Clint coming out to, to really protect his uh, coach. Then he got tossed also. See the pitch, it was at the knees. So now Jeff Bannister will end up being the acting manager the rest of the way, the bench coach. I, th I think what they were probably, or what Rick was saying, it's from his vantage point down there, he's been watching those low strikes get called balls most of the day. Because we've seen some that have been at the knees, that have lit up the strike zone that we've looked at, that haven't been called strikes. And then all of a sudden one is called a strike. And so he probably said something about the consistency of the strike zone. That, you know, why is that a strike now? It's been a ball most of the afternoon. Maybe he didn't use quite the same words I used, but I would I would think it was something along those lines. And you, know, you can take your chance sometimes, you're gonna get thrown out. Depending uh, a lot on kind of mood the umpire is in. Have, has anybody been saying anything to him about it prior? Is he you know to that point that the next thing said? Whoever says it's going to get thrown out. A lot, of, a lot of things go on in that situation. Reyes rips it to the right field corner, rounding first, heading for second, and a leadoff double for Jose Reyes. He's now one for three, his fifth double of the season. Is uh, off to a slow start with the bat. Definitely a quality big league player for a number of years now. A lot of speed. You, you don't like seeing him uh, start the inning by getting on, or actually, you don't want him on the base at any point, but starting the inning, no. Jays with a man in scoring position. Nobody out for Melky Cabrera, who's one for two. And Cabrera launches one to deep right center field. This ball heading back, and this ball is gone. A home run. Melky Cabrera with his sixth home run of the season. It's now six to one. Well, I think what Cabrera was trying to do there, uh, more than anything else, was be aggressive and get out there and pull something. Trying to, <clears throat> excuse me, trying to make sure he was able to to move Reyes. But uh, not only did he pull it, he pulled it over the fence. The fastball right on the inside corner. That was a, probably exactly what he was hoping for. Looking for something to pull. Hit right on the yellow line. And then bounced on over into the stands. Jose Bautista takes a strike. He's looking for something to pull, and that's exactly what he got. Fastball inside corner. One and one to Bautista is 0 for 2 today. Watch it hit the very top of the wall. A lot of times we talk about balls just not enough to make it, barely missing being a home run. Well, that barely made it over. Probably an inch and a half further down that yellow line, the bounce comes back onto the field. Bautista had to get out of the way. Yeah, breaking ball that came out of the hand a little too early.
three and one the count and Volquez gets the sign from Stewart. And the pitch in for a strike. Here's the three two. And he walked him. So Bautista heading down to first and we're going to head down to Robbie. Well guys it was a week ago today when the Blue Jays set a major league record by fielding a starting lineup with six players from the Dominican Republic. And Ensign Volquez told me his first reaction was oh that's crazy. But he also sees a true joy in what the Blue Jays are doing and it makes him proud to see that. Everyone knows there's a lot of talent in the Dominican Republic but it's good to see his countrymen many of his countrymen on the same field. Francisco Liriano said that it's amazing to see the progress uh, how many guys that have made it from the Dominican uh, to the United States and uh, it's the only sport they really play down there and it represents a major step forward to see this so we saw Dominican Republic win the World Baseball Classic last season when you look at the top five guys in the lineup Reyes Cabrera Bautista Encarnacion and Francisco all five of those guys are from the Dominican Republic they've got uh, Esmil Rogers as well. Uh, who is a, a pitcher, relief pitcher on the roster as well, Moises Sierra, another Dominican on the roster. So some nice strides being made with regard to the transition from the Dominican here to big league baseball. Yeah, they are a very proud nation, obviously, when it comes to a number of things, including their baseball players. Edwin Encarnacion. 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. Nobody out, man on. Volquez pitch. Ground ball to Pedro. To Walker for one. That's a double play. And right around the horn they go, and there are two down. Nice visit by Ray there. Well, yeah, he obviously told him to throw a double play ball. That's right, give me a ground ball. Edison uh, kind of nonchalant there as he was watching him turn that really easy double play. And two down, base is empty. And an interesting inning. Both first base coach Rick Sofield and manager Clint Hurdle ejected. 17th time Clint has been ejected as a manager of the Pirates and first time this year. Alki Cabrera, the two run home run. Bautista with the walk has reached base 31 straight games to start the season. Last guy to go this far, at the beginning of the season, was Joey Votto in 2011. And Juan Francisco struck out swinging in the third. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Appeal and Adam Hammery says he did not go. That light fluorescent green the sleeve on that front arm. Yeah, a couple of the guys have been doing that. Francisco, we saw Bautista, not Bautista, but Reyes earlier in the series had a sleeve like that on. You can't miss it, that's for sure. In the old days, it'd be something to aim for. <laughs> old school Bob Walk. No, oh, no, I'm just you know, older days than me. Ah, I see. Well, that was back before color existed, then. Everything we well, love, that the world color. was black and white. That color. Yeah. A chartreuse arm sleeve. 3 2 pitch. Ground ball splits the shift and a base hit. Francisco aboard with two down. Well, you can see uh, the shift and uh, watch the ground ball. Yeah, nobody could get to that one. I was playing with a, a veteran a pitcher years ago, and the, one of the first guys to ever wear one of those arm guards came up to the plate, had it on his forearm. 
veteran pitcher looked at me and he goes, you know what that is? And I said, no, not really, because it's a target. Something to throw at. That's why I thought about that, just to clear things up. When I saw the fluorescent green forearm band. It makes it easier to see. Yeah. Brent Laurie one for two. Brett's got different stuff on his arms. Ground ball towards short, backhanded deep by Mercer goes to second to get the force play. Two run home run by Melky Cabrera after the double by Reyes, and the Blue Jays extend their lead. Fall on Root Sports is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. And by Levin Furniture, proudly featuring solid wood American made Amish furniture. For furniture that lasts, shop Levin. Let's go, Bucks! For the second straight game, the Pirates find themselves down by five runs midway through. They were able to come back and win last night. See what they can do now. Jeff Bannister, the acting manager, Dave Jouse at first base after Rick Sofield was tossed. Dave Jouse, long time baseball man. He's been around. Story lines on the center field. And that's how the Pirates fifth begins with a base hit from the Pirates catcher. When you fall behind like this, and we talked about it last night, you gotta get some base runners. You have to be fairly selective at the plate to make sure that you're not doing that pitcher any uh, any favors by uh, swinging at his pitches. Gotta maybe take a few more than you're used to. Gotta get a couple guys on, and somebody find a gap. Get a couple crooked numbers on the board. Jose Tobit up there to pinch hit, but he's got a problem with his shoelace. Make a lot a of bright double. colors today. Yeah, those double. shoelaces. Double knotted, so it won't come out. So that is the end of the day for Edinson Volquez. Tobit a hitting for him. Pirates hoping to get something going against McGowan in the fifth. Ball one. And Volquez five innings today six earned runs on seven hits two home runs one of them a grand slam by Colby Rasmus. And Tabata hits one well to center field but it's going to hang up for Rasmus. And there 
is one out. Pirate fans, we want to see how you root for the Bucks. Be our AT&T fan photo of the day. Show us the most unique ways you raise the Jolly Roger, the fun places you watch the games on Root Sports, or how you display your Pirate prize. Simply submit a picture via Twitter. Hashtag Bucks fan photo. We'll show them during our telecast. Yes. May the fourth be with the Bucks. May the fourth be with all of you. It's a Star Wars day. Apparently one. Will be one. There's a ground ball. There's one. There's two. And the Jays go around the horn in a very, very quick inning. For the Blue Jays. No runs a hit. That's it. On to the sixth. Ralph Kiner is a Hall of Fame slugger for the Pirates, a distinguished baseball announcer, and a name known among the Hollywood elite. Celebrate his life and career with interviews from his teammates, fellow broadcasters, and Kiner himself on a special Inside Pirates Baseball Tuesday after postgame on Root Sports. Blue Jays with a 6-1 to lead. Pirates have won the series two games to one, but we'll have to come back if... They want to pull off the series sweep. Seven hits for Toronto, just three for the Pirates. And in the top of the sixth inning, taking over in his second major league appearance, Casey Sadler he made his debut Friday night against the Jays. Hey, you could see it in Indy, beginning of the year, really tearing it up with that 167 ERA, 3-0 record, just four starts. Wasn't giving up much of uh, anything. Good solid year last season. The, uh, Altoona Curves pitcher of the year. Sandler will face Colby Rasmus. Rasmus two for two. Grand slam and a double. Strike call to Rasmus, one and one. Two balls and a strike to Rasmus. It's been productive. Seven homers, 16 RBIs, and his first grand slam of the year. It's helped down his RBI total quite a bit. Came into the series with five home runs. He's got two. Hit one Friday night. An opposite field home run. Only the second time in his career he's had an opposite field home run to left. Well, probably not real proud of that batting average. He'd like to get that up quite a bit. But definitely I'll take those seven long balls at this point of the year.
plays in a good ballpark for home runs. Hitting coach Kevin Seitz are watching on. Seitz has got some hitters to work with. To left field and deep back goes Marte in front of the Warren track. They retire Rasmus. Take a look at our Allegheny Health Network injury update. Wandy Rodriguez is on the 15 day disabled list. Will not return from the disabled list to start tomorrow against San Francisco. He'll go out and make a, a rehab start soon instead. And not quite ready to go. So the Pirates will have another starter tomorrow. And if you put two and two together, it's more than likely going to be Jeff Locke. And the Pirates would have to make a roster move tomorrow to get Locke on the active roster. There's the old one pitch to Eric Kratz. There's a strike. Casey Sandler on the road trip with the Pirates, but didn't get into a game to make his big league debut. Got to warm up both in St. Louis and in Baltimore. Kratz hits one to left field, and Marte takes care of it. Two gone. And McGowan is third time up. He has struck out twice, once looking and once swinging. Sandler delivers ball one low. And they'll get by this at bat now with uh, McGowan. And then he'll be into that, that area where he doesn't travel very often. Six. Plus innings. Be on a short leash, you would think. You don't have to worry about the uh, spot coming up to hit. Well, the Bucks have gotten to these uh, Blue Jays bullpen in the last two days. A lot of teams have been getting to the bullpen of the Jays. Well, let's hope it pays off again if we can get there sooner than later. Much activity going on out there. Two balls, two strikes. It won't be long, though. Be moving those chairs. Start using those mounds a little bit. And struck him out. So Sadler has a one, two, three, sixth. Good looking work. And Casey Sadler on to the bottom of the six now. This past off season, 
They had their jersey numbers retired by Chipola College, a junior college located in Mariana, Florida. The two played together for one year, and there's Russell Martin giving a speech with his jersey being retired. Martin said it was a, a special moment in his life, and he's never worked harder in his life on the field and off than when he did when he was at Chipola. So to go back there and see his old teammates and coaches, he said it's like a brotherhood. Every time he goes back there, there's a bond they have that will never be broken. Now, Jose Bautista and Martin played there for one year together. It was Bautista's sophomore year. Russ was a freshman. Martin remembers Jose as being one of the hardest workers he's ever seen. And the funny thing is, Bautista not only played right field, which is obviously where he is now in the big leagues, but he served as a closer as well. He threw 94-95, and Martin said there's no surprise. He's as good a right fielder as he is. It's just he saw it, by, obviously, when Martin caught him when they played junior college together back at Chipola. State championship game two years in a row, but lost both times. Wow, battery reunited here this weekend. And Neil Walker takes up high and away for ball one. Walker's 0 for 2 today. Has a run batted in, however. Got Jay Hay in on the first after his leadoff triple. And this would be a nice inning to start getting after Dustin McGowan. Pirates have had a slow day offensively, just three hits. We we'll talked, I think it was last inning, I was talking about being patient, to trying to get some base runners. Uh, Neil, he certainly is that type of hitter. He, He'll uh, work counts as good as anybody we have. But this is the point of the ball game when you're looking at that five run deficit. You're starting to think, man, we got to get a couple guys on, and then somebody comes up with a big hit. The two big hits uh, yesterday's game. Neil got one of them. Mercer, that big pinch hit double. Well, hopefully that will happen again this afternoon. Popped up and playable for the catcher Eric Kratz. Neil is out. He's 0 for 3. Let's go back to our Root Sports studios and Dan Potash standing by with his game break. And Stanton off to a great start this year, isn't he? One of the uh, good young players in this league. Andrew McCutcheon. 0 for 1 with a walk. One of the absolute best young players right there. Got the MVP on the wall to kind of put a little exclamation point on how good he is. Not getting a lot to hit. Well, you would think six to one, you might go on the strike. Especially Never know. Nobody on base. One out. And he did throw him a strike. One thing about yeah, McGowan. Barely. <laughs> his fastball usage will go up the third time through the order. About 71% of the time, he'll go to the fastball. Is full at three and two. Three balls, two strikes, one out, nobody on. Pirates need some base runners. Home runs been a big part of Toronto's offense today. It usually is for the Blue Jays, but a grand slam by Rasmus in the second, a two run homer by Cabrera in the fifth. Now the Blue Jays have scored. And third base. And Juan Francisco throws out the cutcher. Two men out in the Pirates sixth. The cuts going down that line hard. They put pressure on that left side of the infield, even on the routine ground balls. Even down six to one. They, the cutch is a leader, but he, he leads uh, by example. Shows everybody what it means to play hard all the time.
Pedro Alvarez one for two. He has a six game hitting streak. Hit a frozen rope off the right field wall in the fourth. Strike call. One ball, one strike. Two balls and a strike. Ball in the dirt to Pedro. Alvarez was hot earlier in the season. Kind of leveled off a bit. Batting average has been rising. He's now at 212. Two balls, two strikes. It's always been a, I think one of the challenges with Pedro that to try and even things out a little bit better. At not so much of it being an on-off switch, real hot or or real cold. Oh, this one foul. Watch out. There are times when it, you know, it's not even about he's hot. They can't get him out. They, he gets hot to where they can't keep him in the ballpark. Just gets on one of those tears with the home runs. There's one little thing that's missing though, and that's the, uh, the, the consistency, so that the the down parts aren't so aren't so far down. There aren't quite as many strikeouts. Whenever gets to that point, look out. What kind of numbers he could put up. The count is full. Let's see what Eric Kratz puts down. They all pitched and pulled into the far end of the. Blue Jays dug out and hit a bat over there. George Poulos, the trainer, had to duck to get out of the way. That's a good ball to get out of the game. All it wants to do is hit bats. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want that that baseball anymore. And Pedro walks. That ball's no good either. That didn't. Come close to anything. A bad or a strike. Go through a lot of baseballs anymore in a major league game. They don't stay around long. Well, the Bucks don't have to get them all back. Maybe a couple. One or two here and there. So the game gets a little older. In the bottom of the sixth. Six runs on seven hits for Toronto. One run on three hits for the Bucks. Starling Marte is 0 for 2. Ball one from McGowan. And this is that point where he gets under a, a microscope and they start wondering about, you know, about the, uh, the stamina, about the endurance. How long can he go out there? He hasn't thrown 100 pitches this year. He's at 90 right now. I think 92 is the, uh, the most he has thrown in any game this season. Last year was all relief outings. Last start before uh, this first one this year was back in 2011. McGowan a decent start last time out against Kansas City, trying to put some things together. And as we talked about, trying to solidify himself a spot in the rotation. Blue Jays calling up one of their top pitching prospects. Marcus Stroman, who they figure will be a starter. This next pitch that McGowan will throw will be his 93rd. It will be the most number of pitches he's thrown this season in and out of. It is a ball, three and one. Uh -huh. 
Waiting for that bullpen phone to ring. Bob Stanley, the steamer. Bullpen coach for the Blue Jays. Check swing and foul ball. Last time McGowan threw 100 pitches in a game, you have to go back to June of 2008. So it has been a while since he's been this deep in the ball game. Pedro will take off with this 3 2 pitch. And Marte strikes out. So we are through six full. The Pirates offense not generating much today against Dustin McGowan. Allegheny Health Network Super Mall giving us the pictures this afternoon. Jose Reyes leads off the top of the seventh inning against Casey Sadler. Pirates down six to one. Down ball to first. Ike Davis with a backhand play. Toss to Sadler. One out. Casey got on his horse and covered first base. Out there for just your second time, you're doing everything full blast. Melky Cabrera, two for three, single and a home run, two that RBIs today. That adrenaline is pumping as fast as it ever will right now. Strike one to Cabrera. When he came in and made his major league debut Friday in the seventh inning. First batter he faced was Cabrera. He had to face Cabrera, Batista, and Carnacion, and the one Francisco. Ended up walking in Carnacion, but other than that, got the other three out. One one. And a ground ball to the right side. Diving effort by Walker, but it's out of his reach. And a base hit for Cabrera, his third of the game. The Pirates and Gov X have teamed up for Military Appreciation Night at PNC Park, Tuesday, June 10th at 7.05.
All active duty military personnel and veterans may request up to four complimentary tickets for military ID. Tickets are available while supplies last, so get yours today at pirates.com slash USA. One on, one out. Jose Bautista at the plate. He takes a strike. Sadler called up on the 27th of April from Indianapolis. He went 3 and 0 with the Indians. ERA of 167 over his first four starts. I talked to him the other day about knowing when you're pitching versus not knowing when you're pitching. When you're a starter, you know when you're scheduled to pitch. But when you're a reliever, the mindset is different, and you've got to be ready when called upon. And you don't know when that's going to be. In a lot of cases. Sadler with a 2 1 count on Bautista. You've gone back and forth like that, uh, mostly as a starter, but how different is it when you go out to the pen? It's much better to be a starter. You know me. <laughs> Goes past the glove of Stewart and down to second. Cabrera, especially if you know, you've had a real good win, hey, you pitch great, say you know a complete game, got that W. The next day you're uh, you feel like the king of the world out there, and you know you're not going to have to pitch that day. No, you don't. You're just king of the world. Wearing your tennis shoes, and kicking back in the dugout. Got your warm up jacket on. Back in those days, nothing but a t shirt on underneath. I don't know. I think they might make them wear the uniform now. But it was a, it, it's great life for being a, a successful starting pitcher. Not much can be said bad about it. Bautista walks for the second time this afternoon, so two on now for Toronto. Ray Searage will come out and visit with Casey Sadler. It looked like uh, Sadler a little all over the place with that. That is bad. Jerry Hughes warming up. Sadler just up down. In and out. Ray with this little timeout, bring him back down a little bit. Bring him back in that strike zone. A little bit of a psychologist when you're a pitching coach at this level. Edwin Encarnacion, the first baseman. Two on, one out. He's 0 for 2 today. Chops that one off a foot. Yeah. Nothing one to Encarnacion. An example of that adrenaline there. Foul ball running down the foul line. Sadler runs over and gets it. You just got that nervous energy going right now. And you have to make sure you just channel it in the right direction. Ball of one strike. Sander went to big league camp this year for the first time. Had one scoreless appearance. Two innings of work on the first of March against the Rays of Tampa Bay. And now getting his first taste of regular season big league action. This weekend against the Toronto Blue Jays. Here comes the 2 1 to Edwin Encarnacion. Up in the air to left, and Marte getting under it. And make the catch. Yeah, two out now in the top half of the seventh inning. It 
quite good. Look, he got more of that when it left the bat, but he knew he didn't. And got off on the end a little. So fired the bat away. The hitter always knows about the feel of that ball coming off the bat, whether he got it or not. Quick glance down to his reaction. Always give you a pretty good read. Bautista at first base with Cabrera at second. And Juan Francisco, third baseman up. Takes a strike. When you're 60 feet, 60 feet away on the mound. Another good indication is the sound. You, know, you can you can tell by the way that uh, the ball sounds how far it's going to travel, whether you need to get another new baseball or not. Ground ball to first. Davis has it. Toss to Sadler. Scoreless. One hit, two left. Stretch time. Middle of the seventh at PNC Park. We'll take you around the ballpark on this Kids Day Sunday afternoon. Party of the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates.
Six runs on eight hits for the Blue Jays. One run on three hits for the Pirates. Bucks hoping to pick up their offense. And, well, this is the inning they start to do it, according to what we told you in the open of the telecast today, and what they have been doing during the course of the season, producing runs late from the seventh inning on. Mike Davis hopes to get it started off here. Davis, Mercer, and Stewart, six, seven, and eight, in the Pirates' batting order. Davis to left field on the first pitch. Cabrera underneath it. One pitch, one out. Coming into action today, the Pirates with seven comeback wins. But you look at the at bats, seven inning on. The OPS number at over 100 percentage points higher. That's a a big difference. That's the number that. As your uh, on base percentage, your slugging percentage put together, which is an excellent uh, measure of how well you're hitting. Mercer's 0 for 2, struck out looking in the fourth inning, and at the end of the fourth, Pirates uh, unhappy with the strike three call. And Rick Sofield, the first base coach, and Clint Hurdle both ejected. By home plate umpire Greg Gibson. Well, we don't know that for sure that that's what they were yelling about, but that's a, a very good educated guess it was about the strike zone. Mercer pops it up to left. Cabrera, he drifted way over to left center field, makes the catch. Two fly balls, two outs in the bottom of the seventh inning. This week's Inside Pirates Baseball, Roberto Clemente gets hit number 3,000 for our Buck Money Moment. Jason Grilly cooks up some grilled cheese for the community. There's a lot more to watch. It's on Inside Pirates Baseball, presented by Allegheny Health Network. Today, after postgame on Root Sports. Jason's also got a book coming up as well. And a busy guy. Currently on the disabled list. Earlier in the game, it, it looked like it was a, a little bit of a smaller strike zone we showed numerous uh, pitches that were right on the edge that were going the way of the hitters Stewart a fly ball to right an easy inning for Dustin McGowan who is through seven what the Blue Jays were hoping to get out of them and at the Pirates expense today traveled guy in all of baseball the last two weeks. Here's his itinerary of what he has endured with being called up, called down, travel in the big leagues, travel in the minor leagues. It started April 21st when he was recalled from the Indianapolis Indians to Pittsburgh. Then on the 24th, he gets on a flight when he was sent down, pit to Detroit. Then he drove to Toledo to meet the Indians. 
He earned a save that night and a 7-5 win. Now the 25th, he taxied Toledo to Detroit, then flew to St. Louis to meet the Pirates, activated on the 26th, then sent back down on the 27th. Now Pitt to Indy, those are the teams. He drove four hours from St. Louis to Indianapolis. Then he gets uh, Indy to Providence to travel to meet the team where they played a series in Pawtucket. Recalled on the second yesterday, a 6 a.m. car to get to Boston for a flight. He came along with Vin Mazzaro and pitched a third of an inning last night in relief of Francisco Liriano. And I asked Jared, was this the craziest schedule you've endured in your professional baseball career? And he looked at me and he stopped for a second. He goes, oh, yeah, definitely. So he wrote that down as he was giving us the information, Tim, and he kept a copy to save it for himself so he'll remember what he's enduring right now. Let's hope he maybe can stay here a while more in the bigs, right? Yeah, I hope he's getting the uh, the miles, too, and the points. And Jared Hughes. Where's his first pitch to Brent Laurie? Fouled it off. Hughes comes in as part of a double switch as Snyder will bat ninth. He's now in right field. Mercer's out of the game. Harrison moves from right to shortstop. Oh, one pitch to Lori. Nothing in two. Well, the position of a guy like Hughes is certainly usable very much so at the major league level, but it's a numbers situation with the number of arms the Pirates have. Because he has options, he's going to be that guy to go back and forth, but I don't know if he expected to go back and forth as frequently <laughs> as he just has. Yeah, with all the uh, weather situations we've had. It's a. Uh, Made a such, uh, we've had situations where they, they needed to, uh, to get help for the bullpen, and that's simple as that. You do what you got to do. Nobody said it'd be easy. That uh, extra inning games, so we've had to uh, cover innings with that bullpen. And, and the bullpen, uh, the strength of that bullpen, one of the reasons that the team was so good last year. And you, you don't want to wear that bullpen out early in the year in April. So you try to bring up uh, help whenever you can. Or whenever you need. He was delivering 0-2. Murray to right field Snyder there. And there's one out. A little bit of an addendum uh, about Hughes's travels, right, Robbie? Well, we mentioned the drive when he was sent from Pittsburgh to Indianapolis on April 27th. He rented a car in St. Louis and drove to Indianapolis, and he actually had to drive around some tornadoes, and he said he was scared. He was worried that he was going to actually drive maybe on the periphery of the tornado, but luckily he made it there okay. But, Bob, you mentioned the weather a couple moments ago. That scared Jared on uh, one of his drives. One of the hazards of the profession, <laughs> unfortunately. Colby Rasmus takes a strike. Well, hopefully, Jared could keep it right there. I was, I was hoping to get a little bit more of an extended uh, inning that uh, last go around in the, the bottom of the seventh. It was only, ended up only being a six pinch inning. Now, what you're, you're looking for, hopefully, six, seven pitch at bats. At this point, trying to get back into this game, hopefully get a couple of walks and get into that bullpen. So now uh, Jared's got put up a zero, and we're down to just two frames left. Two-one pitch to Rasmus from Hughes. Rasmus to right field, and Snyder played on a bounce. Third hit. Of the day for Colby Rasmus. Three out of four. A look at the road ahead for the Pirates brought to you by Nissan. Tomorrow, the Bucks return to National League play as the Giants come to town. Then an off day and three games against the Central Division Cardinals will close out the homestand. The next road trip takes the Bucks to Milwaukee and New York for three at Yankee Stadium before returning home to play the Orioles and the Nationals. That is the road ahead. A lot of birds in May. A lot of birds. Ended the month of April with a lot of birds. Perhaps with a strike. I wish the folks could see the uh, the artwork that you came up with yesterday. 
instead of writing Blue Jays on your score sheet, you drew one. Not the first time you've done that. I'm better with pictures than birds than, birds than words. Oh, well, one pitch. That's why I read all those comic books. <laughs> Just for the pictures. Well, the first time you drew a bird picture, I, I thought it was a whale. So that's how good of an artist you are. <laughs> and it didn't look quite like that, but it did resemble a bird. I think he's been practicing. France to left field. That's going to get down for a hit. Around second and heading for third is Rasmus. And runners at first and third with one out. Good job by Marte keeping that ball out of the corner. And that ball just right down the middle. Slider. Marte able to cut this off and then with his big arm he keeps the double play in order. Now a pinch hitter for the Blue Jays. Be the switch hitting catcher Deonor Navarro. Right now the Blue Jays carrying three catchers. Josh Tolley the other one he started the first two games. Only four position players on the bench. So if you mark your scorecard put Navarro in there pulling for the pitcher McGowan. That does it for McGowan his best outing of the season. Going seven full and allowing only three hits and a run. Talking to George Poulos, the trainer. Good, good solid start. Three hitter from seven. Should, uh, you would think, keep him in that starting rotation. A slap down the left field line, fair ball. Rasmus is going to score. Kratz heading to third base. He'll stop there. It's seven to one, Toronto. Did you see Navarro run the first? I didn't. I was looking down in left field. It was a it was a thing of beauty. Hopefully we have Navarro. I don't know if we're going to have it or not. But watch this. He must have a bad leg. I, I'm assuming. No, that, gotta, that's on a ball down in the corner. You got to watch on him. Anybody got a time? It'll be a pinch runner for yeah, him. Yeah, he's got to have a bad wheel. Definitely got a bad wheel. So R.A. Dickey, last night's starting pitcher, will pinch run. As Reyes tries to slap it the other way. Dickey, very athletic. You always worry about pinch running though with your starting pitchers. Don't get hurt. Don't pull out. Don't pull a hamstring. Former teammates in New York, R.A. Dickey and Ike Davis. Grants back to third base. Nobody moving around on that ball in the dirt by Hughes. So one run comes in at the top of the eighth, seven to one the score. Eleven hits for Toronto this afternoon. Pirates came into this game really hoping to pull off a series sweep. They don't have one this year. Well, no matter what happens, it's a series win anyway. Right. I mean, that's the, the way we uh, really talked all last year. You remember, it was all about you, know, you just go series at a time, try to win the series, not worry about a lot of other things. And at the end of the year, you'll. Would be in a in a good position, and that's what we have to get back to. 
series by series. Just make sure you take two out of three most of the time. And Reyes pops up to center. Kratz tagging. McCutcheon will throw it to the plate, and Kratz stays put. Two men out for Toronto. First and third, and the batter, Melky Cabrera. Cabrera with three hits today, two singles, and a two run homer. Had 41 hits over the first month of the season. Last day of March through the entire month of April, 41 hits. And a bouncer toward Walker. He will flip to Harrison. They force out Dickey at second base. Another run comes in on three hits, heading to the bottom of the eighth. Now down six runs. Blue Jays drafted him in 2006, and he came up through all levels of the Blue Jays system before hitting the big leagues for a couple seasons. Of course, he became a Pirate back in 2012, and I asked him about facing his former team, and he said it would be emotional. Had it been two years ago, but a lot of time has passed since then, and the roster's changed. So now it's more about seeing the guys you came up with, enjoying the experience of playing against the guys you grew up playing with. He added that being traded was a big, uh, wasn't that big of, a, of an adjustment. It's the same game, just a different uniform and getting accustomed to the people you work with and what they're about. And he's very comfortable in the transition he made from the Blue Jays and, of course, to the here, uh, to here in Pittsburgh, rather, where the Pirates have a very strong clubhouse. His roommate in double-A was Brett Cecil, who appeared in the game the other night. Snyder and Cecil were, were able to grab a late bite to dinner after the game and uh, catch up on old acquaintances. So uh, not as emotional on the field, but good for Travis to see some friends, Tim and Bob. And making his major league debut is Marcus Stroman, number two prospect for the Jays. He's called up from Triple A Buffalo, facing the former Jay and Travis Snyder. And Stroman's got to have that adrenaline pumping right now. 36 strikeouts, 20 split, 26 innings. Pretty good. Yep. And he figures. To become a starter for the Jays, but working out of the bullpen for the time being. And a foul ball. Back when the Blue Jays called him, according to one of the writers that covers the team in Toronto, when the Blue Jays called him, he missed the call. And then, through whatever means, his mom had heard about it. And his mom called him and told him, Hey, you've been called up. Usually it's the other way around. The, the player calls the mom and says, hey, guess what? I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how things are nowadays. It used to be the manager called you in and told you. The 
Oh, the 2 2 pitch to Snyder outside 3 and 2. I guess everything's done with the, the phones nowadays. It may have been at a time when he wasn't at the park. We needed to get him heading in this direction. He's out of Duke University. And a ground ball to third base. Francisco throws on the first to retire Snyder. Now Duke University has had a lot of first round picks in basketball, never in baseball until Stroman came along. But if the draft was in place when Dick Grote was at Duke, that might have been a different story. Dick Grote was an amazing story. That's for sure. What an athlete he was. Probably still is. <laughs> MVP 1960. Shortstop on the Pirates World Series title team. Great basketball player, super basketball player. Out of Duke, he played basketball and baseball. And a strike called him. Harrison. Need a little more wind to see the the date on that, but that was 1960. One is inside three and one. Three and one, one out, base is empty. Stroman's pitch, swing and a miss. It's three and two. We have challenged him with that fastball. He did it again, same pitch. And facing Stroman last year, Stroman in Double A in New Hampshire, and Manchester was nine and five for the Fisher Cats, with 3.30 earn run average. And Josh looks this one toward the gap. That one's down into the wall, and Harrison will turn it on around second base, heading for third. Josh slides safely in with his second triple of the game. Same spot. His first triple, he did exactly the same thing, put it right there in front of the trip sign. There was a little bit of a, a problem picking that ball up. Jay Hay started to slow down. He saw him mess, mess up the ball out there and decided, why not just go to third? I can make it without a throw. Uh, the only thought in his mind, I'm sure, is that I got to be able to get there without a throw because of what the score is. Well, Pirates with a base runner and a man at third, one out for Walker. Walker got him in the last time with a ground ball out. Jay staying hot. Neil's hitting three straight games, but is 0 for 3 today. And he's hit by a pitch. That one hurt. And now two on for the Bucks. And can the battle and Bucks battle all the way back? Well, this is a start. Went off the bottom of the shoe, it looked like. Maybe it didn't hurt. <laughs> they got him on the hard plastic of the spikes. It probably didn't feel good, but if it hadn't got him on that shoe, it would have uh, hurt a little more. Pete Walker, the pitching coach, makes a visit to Stroman. A two on and one out. Now the Pirates getting to the heart of the order. Andrew McCutcheon with Pedro Alvarez to follow. Yeah, the, the Blue Jays might have those bad feelings starting to creep in after the first two games. Seeing the Pirates get a couple runners on base here with the middle part of that lineup coming up. 
Kutch and Pedro. Let's see what Kutch can do with two on and one out. Harrison at third base. Somebody this first. inning to hit one over the fence is what what you're really looking for. You get a big strike, cut that lead uh, at least in half immediately. Side for a ball. Two and oh. Left hander Brent Cecil warming up. Well, we just mentioned him. Talking about getting reacquainted with his buddy Travis Snyder. 2 0 -oh coming. Pop foul and out of play. Two ball, one strike count to McCutcheon. Andrew without a hit today. He has walked. Walked in the first, and he's grounded out to second, grounded out to third. Swinging strike, and it's two and two. So Strowman in his major league debut facing the National League most valuable player. Josh Harrison, two triples. In the ball game, last pirate with two triples in a game. Alex Presley at Chicago on the 2nd of September in 2011. Popped him up. Bautista drifting back in right field. Harrison tagging. Bautista gets behind it. Here's the throw. Josh coming to the plate. Slide. Save for the head first slide is Harrison. Jay Hay with some hustle scores a run. Good. Pretty good throw from Batista here. He got uh, the momentum coming to the plate. The uh, ex third baseman put a one hopper right there. In the old days, I think they might have had a an easier out because you would have uh, you would have had Kratz straddling the the plate instead of taking that throw. Way out on the first base side, and he just couldn't come back and make that sweep tack soon enough. And Jay Hay able to sneak that hand in. So Harrison in the dugout at seven to two. John Gibbons will relieve Marcus Stroman of duty. He'll go to the lefty Brent Cecil to face Pedro Alvarez when we come back. Seven to two, two outs, man on, and Pedro Alvarez coming up Friday in the ninth inning. Pirates down two runs off of Santos, and this one out of here. Home run number seven. That extended the game a little bit. We've got Marte up two batters later to win with a solo shot. Now Pedro, one for two today with a walk.
Takes ball one from the left hander Cecil. Fifteenth appearance for Cecil. Ranks first in the American League with eight holds. Late strike call by Greg Gibson. Just a little bit out of the strike zone. Yeah, that was the pitch earlier in the ball game was not being called. The, the edge pitches were going the way the uh, the hitters those first couple innings. Ready for the two one pitch. Pedro ground ball to the right side. Brent Lowry from the outfield will throw him out. And Cecil does the job and douses the fire. Pirates do manage to get a run. It's now seven to two. The game got them through the hashtag Bucks fan photo. Live at Bethel Park in front of the Clemente Bridge. How about Dairy Queen? That's cute. And there's Dan Potash. Stephanie Stewart tweeted that. And keep those submissions coming in. Hashtag Bucks fan photo. Show us how you display your pirate pride. That's a good picture right there. Scoreboard not so good as we go to the ninth, seven to two, Toronto leading the Pirates. Jared Hughes remains on, and he will face Jose Bautista. First ball swing, that's a fair ball. Pedro has to double clutch, but still rifles it over there to get him. One pitch, one out in the Toronto ninth. Ball had to have a little chalk on it, huh? Yes, sir. Hit the outside of the chalk line. Pedro a little trouble finding the handle on that one. Made a little close. Half a stride. Nothing in one to Edwin Encarnacion. Thing in two to Edwin Encarnacion. To center field right at McCutcheon. Just didn't have to move very much. He hauls it in out number two. Coming up it's Pirates post game. They'll break this one down. You'll hear from manager Clint Hurdle. And get all the facts and figures about this game. Dan Potash, Kent Tacovi on today's post game show. 
PNC Park. Here's a great rendering of Kent to Colby, the submarine sidewinder. That uh, t shirt had to come out of the mothballs. Ground ball to second. Francisco grounds on. Three up and three down. Pirates to the bat rack. They need a big inning in the bottom of the ninth. Shot at home plate, Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl. Starling Marte will lead off the bottom of the ninth inning, facing Brett Cecil. Takes ball one. Marte today, no hits and three trips. Barnes need to find a way against this beleaguered Toronto bullpen. And bad luck right there. That ball is ticketed for center field. Deflected right to Jose Reyes. And there's one out. Yep, that one looked like it was definitely hit hard enough to make it through there. One six three on the put out. Here's Ike Davis. Davis without a hit today. He has walked. Over the last 15 games, the Blue Jays bullpen posted a 780 ERA with seven home runs allowed, six blown saves, and a whip of 186. And the bullpen this series. Has allowed 14 hits, four walks, and nine runs. The Pirates five down with one out in the bottom of the ninth. Ball two to Davis. Strike call right on the edge. Two and two. This is the middle frame of a real busy day in Pittsburgh. The marathon today, the Pirates game, and then the Penguins Rangers tonight. The Pirates back tomorrow night. 
Matt Kane going to pitch for the San Francisco Giants tomorrow. Right hander is 0 3. And the Pirates presumably will send Jeff Locke to the hill. You may expect Locke to be called up tomorrow to make the start. Pitch in the dirt. Did he go? And Davis is rung up on appeal by Adam Hammery. Davis kind of. Mike doesn't agree. Uh, he's looking out at that uh, scoreboard and he's wondering if that was a, a seven to two ring up. It did look like the head of the bat was out there quite a ways. So the Pirates down to their final out, and Gabby Sanchez will be called upon to pinch hit in the pitcher's spot for Jared Hughes. Pitcher spot seventh after the double switch. Gabby takes a strike. Go home, regroup, and get after the Giants. That's the way it's looking. The Giants will be tough. They'll look ahead at the rotation for that series. Tuesday night, Tim Hudson, who has been terrific for San Francisco, and he's been very difficult while with the Braves against the Pirates. We'll pitch against Charlie Morton and then Tim Lincecum and Garrett Cole on Wednesday afternoon. It's a 1235 game Wednesday here at PNC Park. Good idea to make a plan to be out here and enjoy some matinee baseball. You get to see Cy Young winner in Lincecum and perhaps a future Cy Young winner in Garrett Cole. One two. Fists. Count even two balls and two strikes. Bucks down to their final strike today. This was a little closer than you'd like the stage of the ball game, or actually any time. Right up under the chin. Two balls, two strikes to Gabby Sanchez. Been shitting here in the bottom of the night. Ball game's over. Gabby strikes out. It's a 1 2 3 bottom of the ninth. Cecil strikes out two. Pirates drop the finale of this three game series, but win the series two games to one. Colby Rasmus, a grand slam today. Three hits, a double, and a single to go along with his second inning grand slam. Fourth career grand slam for Rasmus. And that was really the big hit of the ball game today. As Dustin McGowan. Gets the win. And Edinson Volquez will suffer the loss here today. Pirates now 12 and 19, and they'll say goodbye to interleague play for a short time. And hello to the San Francisco Giants starting tomorrow night. Well, on paper, I was kind of hoping that this one was going to go our way, uh, especially when we were able to get that run in the first inning. It looked good. It, uh, you know, I thought that we had the edge in, uh, in starting pitching this afternoon, but it just didn't play out that way. A little bit of wildness in the second uh, was a, a problem for Edinson, and uh, and that was kind of the ball game after that. So the Blue Jays win this getaway day game for them, seven to two. The final score. Let's check in with our post game guys, Dan Potash and Kent Tacovi. Well, I think it's fair to say that the Pirates had the Blue Jays right where they wanted them, considering how the first two games of the series went. Pirates trailing late, but unfortunately no comeback today. One reason why, Justin McGowan was able to go deep into the game, and the Jays didn't need too much of their bullpen. No, and, uh, you know, those are a couple of things we were looking for going in. We talked about it the other night. McGowan's had some stamina issues. Uh, he didn't have any today. In fact, you know, today he set uh, season highs in both innings pitched and pitches in a game. Seven innings today, six and a third was the old high for him, and he threw 101 pitches, 92 was the previous high. So, yeah, it was uh, Dustin McGowan show today, and everything you thought you might be able to take advantage of, he took away from the Pittsburgh Pirates. They couldn't uh, pitch count him out. They couldn't, you know, get rid of him and get to that bullpen soon enough. Uh, we did score on the bullpen, just didn't have enough time to score enough, and probably too far behind at that point, too. 
All right, well, we are just getting started here. You're going to hear from manager Clint Hurdle on what he thought about this afternoon's contest. Plus, we'll look ahead to the Giants and see how they fared in Atlanta against the Braves. You'll also hear from the Buckos. All that and much more coming up on Pirates Post Game, presented by the Allegheny Health Network as the Buckos take two of three from the Toronto Blue Jays. Unfortunately, come up a little bit short this afternoon. 7-2 the final. We'll be back live at PNC Park right after this.